Hello, this is Mike Hayes, and on this video we're going to talk about how to teach yourself guitar chords. In particular, on this video we're going to look at how to play the G chord in a variety of easy fingerings. Now, if you've just started out playing guitar, you may be confused as to the best way of playing a G chord. In fact, your friends might play the G chord in a variety of different shapes, and you might have looked up a chord book and seen even different shapes for the G chord. Now in reality when you're teaching yourself how to play chords the thing to keep in mind is that each chord has a specific spelling and once you know the spelling for that chord when you have that combination of notes you can play it anywhere on the guitar at all. So let's begin with some easy G chord shapes and I'll just explain how this works. The notes that go to make up a G chord are G, B and D. This is how you spell G chord in music. Wherever you have these three notes, G, B and D, on the guitar fingerboard, you'll be playing a G chord. In fact, you don't even have to have these three notes. You can have just two of them. You could have a G and a D and you'll have a G chord. I'm going to start off by showing you two easy G chord shapes. Now both of these shapes only use one finger. So if you're just starting out on guitar, this first shape is a really good one to try. How I'm playing this shape is just by placing my third finger at the third fret on the first string. That's all I'm doing with my left hand. With my right hand, I'm strumming the first four strings. And there's your G chord. Now if you'd like a G chord with a nice rich sound that's good for backing up vocals, what I'm going to do is place my third finger at the third fret on string six. Now this is a little bit trickier because what I want to do is block out string five. I just want to make a click there. Uh, you'll probably find it's quite easy to do because if we just let our third finger be a little bit lazy and lean across that fifth string it'll block it out. What I'm going to do with my right hand is strum right down to the second string. So in reality I'll be strumming five strings but I only want four to sound because I'm blocking out that fifth string. Here's my G chord. Now these next two ways of playing G chord are aimed at players who've been playing guitar for a little while. For example, you probably know the D chord shape. But what you may not know is that if you move this D chord shape up the fingerboard until your first finger reaches the seventh fret, I'm just keeping the exact same shape, the D chord shape. But now if I play the first three strings, I have another way of playing G chord. So here's another chord shape that you'll already know if you've been playing a while. I'm just going to take the C chord shape and I'm going to move this C chord shape up the fingerboard until my first finger is at the 8th fret. This time I have to be careful not to strum the 1st string or the 6th string. But if I move my C chord shape up to the 8th fret and strum the inside 4 strings, that's the 2nd, 3rd, 4th and 5th string, I'll have a G chord. And now I'd like to show you two more G chord shapes that I find very useful in specific musical situations. Uh, for example, if we're playing songs by the Eagles, for example, this next G chord shape would be a very useful one to know. And I'm playing this G chord shape by placing my fourth finger at the third fret on the first string, my third finger at the third fret on the second string, and my second finger at the third fret on the sixth string. I'm blocking out the 5th string and I'm strumming all the 6 strings. And here's how this G chord sounds. And in many instances I would use that G chord shape if I was changing from G to C and I wanted to create that Eagles type guitar sound. Uh, all I'd have to do if I wanted to change to the C chord 
I would simply move my second finger down to the fifth string and we'd be creating a C2 chord and uh, it sounds like this, here's my G chord and if I wanted to change to the C2 chord I'd simply move my second finger down and strum five strings. Incidentally with this C chord I'd be blocking out the fourth string. So here's those two chords again, the G to C. And this last G chord I'm playing by placing my first finger at the third fret on the second string my third finger at the fifth fret on the fifth string and my fourth finger at the fifth fret on the fourth string. And I find this is very useful if I'm moving from C to an F2 which incidentally is going to be the same shape, the exact same shape as this G chord. So when I move that F2 chord up two frets it becomes a G chord. Uh, let's have a listen to how these three chords sound. C, F, G.